Well, okay, Brian, if you really want me to provoke, I mean, I, you know, I can rise to that bait too. So I'm going to propose that all of this may not be as straightforward as we're making it out to be. I mean, if it's only about repetition, then New England's claim on Thanksgiving Day is a little shaky too, because as far as I understand, not being a historian of New England, it's not like those Puritans in 1621 kicked off a tradition that their proud New England descendants said, yes, let's honor the Puritans and Indians doing lunch in an unbroken tradition (laughs) year after year. And it wasn't until 1863 that the fourth Thursday of the month was declared a day of national thanksgiving by the then president. That would be uh, Abraham Lincoln. That's right, Peter. Good command of my century. Uh, (laughs) Now, up till then, the various states did have their own official days of Thanksgiving, but they were scattered around here and there in the various fall months. Yeah, and and during the Revolution, certain days were set aside to thank God for guidance on the battlefield. George Washington even proclaimed days of Thanksgiving as president. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're always trying to emphasize that other war was interesting, but I'm talking about the real war, the Civil War. It was then that Americans started to celebrate Thanksgiving the way we do now, with pies and potatoes and turkey and more pies and cranberry sauce and more turkey and more pies. And this kind of celebration, well, it's largely the work of one woman, a magazine editor named Sarah Hale, and she was a widow from New England. And in 1820, she became the editor of Godey's Ladies Book, despite its title, which I always thought was pretty ugly, it was a hugely popular magazine. And for more than 30 years, she wouldn't let up. She published editorials and stories and letter-writing campaigns, all to convince her readers in the great cause that ultimately the government would declare Thanksgiving as the holiday that this young nation needed the most. Seventy years ago, there were only about three millions of people under our flag. Now it waves its protecting folds from the Atlantic to the Pacific, and nearly 30 millions of souls are enjoying its blessings. If every state should join in Union Thanksgiving on the 24th of this month, would it not be a renewed pledge of love and loyalty to the Constitution of the United States, which guarantees peace, prosperity, progress, and perpetuity to our great republic? I think she really did believe that she was providing a kind of missing puzzle piece to the nation by recommending the celebration of this festival. That's Anne Blue Wills, a religion scholar at Davidson College, who's written a lot about Sarah Hale. And she told me that if we want to understand why we do what we do on Thanksgiving, we should forget about the pilgrims and look instead at what was going on 200 years later in Sarah Hale's America. She, you know, was coming into this position of editing this magazine at a moment when things are still kind of unsettled in the young republic. When are we talking about? This is 1827 when she becomes the editor. Okay. You know, there's a lot of growth. There's a lot of change. And she was one of the leaders in formulating a pretty strong notion of what women in this new republic were to do. Mm. And the way she described it was, you know, women are the virtuous heart of the nation and women preside over the home. Mm -hmm. And the home is where the American male who has to go out into the world and strive and make his way and earn a living He can come home at the end of the day and be cleansed by his pure and domestic wife from all of the kind of nasty bargains that he's had to make during the day. So Thanksgiving for Hale fits into this gendered division of work. So what you're you're saying, you're kind of blowing my mind here, because (laughs) what you're saying is that this didn't just sort of naturally grow up. It wasn't just sort of, hey, look at all these turkeys and all this pie we could eat, but instead was a very self-conscious strategy to cement the place of women in the household and the society and at the same time celebrate America. Yeah, and for her, the you know patriot fathers who, of course, she's thinking New England context, so she's thinking you know a, a kind of 
cooperation, reinforcement of civil and religious authority, um, those powers working together to build up a society. I think she wanted to see that kind of cohesion still in the first part of the 19th century. And Just without the witches, <laughs> right? I, I take it she didn't have uh, witches in her vision um, of things. There were, there were no witches, but she did mm. have serious concerns about certain influences in her era. One of her concerns was a growing population of 